Greeting you, brother. Here we are at the uh, last of our sessions for uh, section one as we are working through the book of Revelation. So let me open us with prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you so much again for time together and time in your word. We ask you that you would bring clarity uh, to us as we work through this book and that you would unite us in our faith and our spirit. Lord, that you would give us all comfort and peace that we would just receive this book as the hope that it is meant to be. In your name we pray. Amen. So we are finishing up with Revelations 1, verses uh, 1 through 8. Today we're going to focus on verses uh, 4 through 8. And from the beginning of the opening verses of Revelation, we, we've come to understand that the code book for unlocking all of Revelation uh, is nothing really more than a bunch of the Old Testament. And for people that are familiar with the Old Testament, like really, really familiar with the Old Testament, Revelation is an open book, more more than a closed book. It's more of a comfort rather than a, a fearing book. Uh, it also shows doesn't show the division between the New Testament and the Old Testament, but more of the continuous stream of the New Testament fulfilling the Old and pointing to the final uh, return of Jesus Christ and the final judgment. Of the 404 verses in Revelation, 278 of them make reference to Old Testament scriptures. For example, verse 7 declares that Jesus is coming. And with the accumulation in the clouds, this verse refers back all the way to the book of Daniel, chapter 7, verses 13, in which the one, like the Son of Man, comes in clouds and approaches the Ancient of Days. Jesus himself applies the prophecies to himself as recorded in Matthew 24, 30 and, and, and 26, 64. And there are parallel verses in Mark and Luke as well. The declaration later, uh, later on, verses point to uh, Jesus. Uh, those who pierced him will look upon him in the direct citation as uh, in Zechariah 12, verses 10. And also in Isaiah 53 5 and Psalm 22 16 again the Old Testament giving us the information we need to understand Revelation in the book of Revelation numbers are heavily used and important to also understand the message of the book the meaning of the numbers remain consistent throughout and the knowing the proper meaning of these numbers will enable us to understand the message well there is some not total agreement on exactly what the numbers mean. The majority of the information um, is, is the same. Right? And many scholars, uh, as to the precise meaning of these numbers, the following guidelines will help us understand uh, as we move, move forward. The failure to properly understand the use of these numbers, though, does cause many issues when people read the book. Uh, throughout the throughout the church uh, and unfortunately the misunderstanding of these numbers leads more to fear rather than to comfort <laughs> for example the number seven is significant and a common number throughout the book it appears in verse four which we have already read referring to the seven churches in Asia and the seven spirits before the throne of God the seven, seven is the number of completeness, perfection, and holiness. The creation of the world accumulated with God resting on the seventh day. The Old Testament speaks of seven high festivals in the Jewish year. Four of, four of them falling in the seventh month. Two of them following, or two of them lasting seven days. The seven churches that are mentioned in verse 4 are real congregations, but they stand more for the whole of Christendom. The seven spirits symbolize the fullness of the power of the Holy Spirit. Uh, 
perhaps referring back to the simple description in Isaiah 11, verse 2, he is the spirit of the Lord, the spirit of wisdom, of understanding, of counsel, of power, of knowledge, and of the fear of the Lord. Seven in turn is the sum of two numbers standing for completeness. Three, which is the number of God, the triune God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And four, the number of the world, the four directions of the compass. The number three and a half, we will see, is half of seven and associated with evil forces and oppositions to the church. Usually those spiritual and religious in nature. The number 12 and 10 are also great in significance. The number 12 refers to the 12 tribes of Israel, the Old Testament, and the New Testament Israel, the 12 apostles. The 10 is a cube representing, you can see there, 10 times 10 times 10 or 1,000 represents completeness again. These may be multiplied and combined to get important illustrative combinations, 24 Old Testament plus New Testament churches, or 144,000 representing the whole of God's people, past, present, and future. So in conclusion, as we wrap up these first eight verses, we will see that these numbers illustrate God's truths to us how they tell us what must soon take place and how they are given to us to comfort us in the midst of our struggles in life. This introduction section ends with a resounding note of assurance as God declares to us that he is the Alpha and the Omega. These are the first and last letters of the Greek alphabet, an appropriate reference as the book was originally written in Greek. As the first and the last, the one who was, who is, and who is to come. He rules over all human, all human history. These words remind God's people that he is in control and that the victory has already been won for them. As we move through the book in the coming weeks, may the declaration of hope and the certainty of victory be at the front of our minds. God bless you guys, and I will see you uh, soon as we join together to work through the questions uh, for section one. God bless.